Welcome back. Game three of the ALCS Astros taking on the Red Sox in Boston last night. Didn't start off so well again for Houston. Red Sox scrapping an early 9-0 lead for a second straight game. Then the Sox hit a grand slam, basically sealed the deal. Red Sox are the first team in MLB history to hit three grand slams in a single playoff series. The Astros managed to score three runs, but it wasn't enough. Boston wins 12-3 and takes a two games to one lead in the AL Championship Series. The big game in our big game coverage this Friday night returns to Orem Stadium on the campus of Alamo Heights where the Mules will host the champion Chargers for the lead in District 15 5A Division 2. We've been here before when Heights hosted Floresville for their district opener. The Mules won that 36-29. Now the charges will be the latest to challenge the Mules. Champion comes into this 6-1 overall, 2-0 in district. For the Mules, they have run the table in their first seven games. are also 2-0 in district. You know, they're just a real solid program. Coached really well. Obviously, we've always been kind of the top two teams in the area for our division. So I just know they're a lot like us. Just going to be a good game all around. It's probably going to decide the district, so we're going to prepare as well as we can and just play try to play our best game and give it all we can. Number five Alamo Heights hosts number six Bernie Champion Friday night at Orem Stadium 7 p.m. Pro football coverage powered by Davis Law Firm. No doubt about it, Dak Prescott. The reason why the Cowboys are able to pull out that comeback victory overtime against the Patriots in New England Sunday night. He willed the Cowboys to the win, having to overcome a number of obstacles that put them in a position to almost lose after tying the game at 29 at end of regulation. Dak threw for 445 yards total, including the game-winning touchdown pass to CeeDee Lamb to escape with that 35-29 OT victory. Prescott was seen limping into the locker room after the game and then prepared, appeared rather in the post-game press conference in a walking boot with a calf injury. Dak decided to have a little fun with it. I figured we, we weren't playing for a week, so I'd give you guys something to talk about and speculate on this time. So uh, there you go. The last throw, uh, yeah, just came down funny and that's what it was. And as I said, someone will get checked out, I'll be fine. Can promise you that. Uh, Great time in going into the bye week, but as I said, y'all can y'all can have fun with it this week. Mission accomplished, Dak. Cowboys say Prescott is getting rest, some rest and uh, do some rehab this week. Cowboys plan to reevaluate his condition early next week. Cowboys next suit up on Halloween against Minnesota on Sunday night football. And that is a look at morning sports. Mm, Halloween. Yes. Interesting time now, 441 and about 61 degrees out there. Are you looking for a new pair of headphones? Well, coming up next, we're going to take a look at which ones tested the best for clarity and more. And next, first look at a one-on-one -on -one interview with Princess Diana's brother, Lord Charles Spencer, who just wrote a new book. And welcome back. It's 444. Princess Diana's brother, Lord Charles Spencer, has written a new book called The White Ship, which he describes as Game of Thrones meets Titanic. ABC's Maggie Rowley has the details in today's GMA First Look. Wow. In this morning's GMA First Look, one-on-one -on -one with Princess Diana's brother, Lord Charles Spencer. What is it like for you to know that your home is a place that still honors your sister's legacy. He's written a new book called The White Ship, and he's invited GMA to his centuries-old family estate in the English countryside. You also had a chance to, to grow up here. Uh, yes. Do you have any favorite childhood memories from your time here? Well, we were very much outdoor children, to be honest. You know, um, I think people think of my sister, for instance, as, as, as a very city person, but not really. And we love this space and we're surrounded here. You know, this park is 500 acres of, of just beautiful English countryside and what an incredible place to grow up. Coming up at 7 a.m., we'll have much more with Lord Spencer on his new book and his sister. With your GMA First Look, I'm Maggie Ruley, ABC News, Althorpe. Well, no matter how you work out, a pair of headphones and some good tunes can be just the thing to keep you going. But there are a lot of choices when it comes to the Bluetooth models. 12 on your size, Marilyn Morris shows us which ones stand up to the test. Tim Moran is training for his first marathon, and there's one thing he never leaves home without. 
I use headphones when I run because the songs help me set the tempo for my run and help me set my speed. Whether you're running or lifting at the gym, wireless is the way to go. Most people find they stay in place and no cords get in the way. Three models that Consumer Reports recommends are water resistant, so no worries about getting them sweaty. First, the Bose SoundSport Wireless, near the top of CR's ratings for portable Bluetooth models. They're $130. And Bose headphones do well on our surveys for owner satisfaction and predictive reliability. And if you love the gym, but not all the background noise, they suggest the $100 noise canceling Clear Ally Plus. And if you're looking for a true wireless model at a budget price, there's the One More Piston Buds for 40 bucks. In sound quality tests, they beat more expensive competitors. One possible issue with true wireless is the shorter battery life, but a lot of them come with a carrying case that doubles as a charger. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. Right now it's 447. Let's go ahead and check in with Mike. It was a very nice afternoon yesterday, but slightly more humid. Still, still okay right now. Yeah, uh, the humidity is up considerably, but again, it's not where you walk outside and it's like, oh, it's humid or anything like that. Um, <laughs> I don't think it's going to really get that way this week. It, you'll notice it more. And uh, as far as jackets are concerned, maybe. Okay. Okay. Won't, won't need it's it by just this afternoon. like bacon, maybe just less crispy this week. Yeah. Less crisp. Chris, really crispy or, or not as crispy? What do you say? As far as bacon? And bacon yeah. or the weather? Bacon. <laughs> bacon, oh, not as crispy. I yes. like it crispy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> Argument in our house all the time. Okay, we uh, digress here. Uh, this is interesting to see the, uh, speaking of walking the dog by the light of the moon, it's, I've heard those described as sun dogs, moon dogs, the, uh, that circle around there, that's some high level moisture and it creates like a little bit of a, uh, a circular rainbow and it's just because the moisture way upstairs in the atmosphere Sphere is tiny ice crystals and they form mm, little prisms and it is gorgeous. Saw the moon coming up looking out the kitchen window last evening and it was dark and that moon which is just about full was so beautiful and bright and we'll have a couple of clouds hanging around here so it may be that good kind of Halloween looking moon. This morning we do have some clouds. This picture doesn't look too bad out there. Uh, dew point temperatures again the number we always show the measure of moisture in the atmosphere. This is how you figure out relative humidity. Those numbers are up a good 10, almost 15 degrees, close to 20 degrees higher, Carrizo Springs and Rock Springs. So, yeah, it's not as crisp by any stretch as what it was over the weekend and yesterday. This is the water vapor, and this shows some of that high level moisture, which is why you saw that great picture there of that ring around the moon this morning. And then that does translate, uh, usually just doesn't depict cloud cover, but it does translate into a little bit of cloud cover coming in here from the west and southwest. And it's just this uh, kind of conduit of moisture streaming on in here from the Pacific Ocean. Got a pretty good storm system out there to the northwest of us. And just right around the Rocky Mountains, yeah, it is producing snow, obviously. But that's not really going to have any impact on our weather directly. Now, back to dew point temperatures. They are going to be staying on the warmer side. And they will continue to kind of creep upwards. So we get into the mid-60s. Again, it's not like it you know, hits you in the face when you walk outside. But it is definitely going to be more humid as we go on in toward the weekend. Here's the uh, computer model and uh, a lot of, you know, it showed a lot of clouds out there. It's basically some high clouds. So we'll have uh, kind of go with partly cloudy the next couple of days with again that high level moisture kind of coming on in here. Thursday late, there is a small chance for a couple of showers. Uh, perhaps a little disturbance is going to be sliding on through here. Not a big deal. And then we go into Friday and maybe a couple little sprinkly showers. Uh, same thing Saturday into Sunday again. Not really great rain chances, just that very small shot at a couple of showers scattered about here and there as we go on into the uh, the weekend and still mild temperatures going into the weekend. So this morning we are going to be not really dropping down all that much then getting up to 76 degrees today at noon under partly cloudy skies. And again, we call it partly cloudy today. 82 high temperature right about normal with enough humidity to where um, maybe you don't want to keep the windows down. Then tomorrow uh, it's going to be a little bit milder in the morning still and then we kind of creep up ever so slight with temperatures, little steps each and every day. Perhaps a shower late Thursday night into the wee hours of Friday morning and then over the weekend. It really wouldn't change any outdoor plans, but just one or two of those showers are going to be popping up uh, here or there in mid 80s. So we are going to be on the above normal side. Actually, 
5 to 10 degrees above normal for low temperatures going into the latter part of the weekend. Yesterday I got home after work and it was, you know, still beautiful outside. I let Truman out. I was like, come on, let's go out back. And he's like, no, it's hot out there. And he gets out there and he's like, oh. oh. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I will stay on the back porch. <laughs> he didn't trust you at first. Yeah, if you want to come back in, no, I'm good. I'm uh -huh. good. Uh -huh. yeah. Same thing with our dog. Yeah. Yes, 451, about 61 degrees. And still ahead, several real queens of the music world are ready to hit the small screen plus June gets a big premiere in London. Here are your lottery numbers and almost make you dance a little jig in the studio. Pick three numbers 656 Fireball 7 your daily four number 7051 Fireball 4. Cash 513-1623-32 and your Texas 2 stop 517-2032 bonus balls 28. Oh, your Powerball numbers, that's right, 30, 32, 48, 53, 63, Powerball 12, Power Play 2. Good luck. The newest version of Dune gets its premiere, plus the new ABC drama Queens debuts tonight. For the latest on what's happening in Hollywood, here's ABC's Jason Nathanson. A rainy London premiere for the remake of Doom stars Zendaya and Timothy Chalamet braving the weather and the screaming fans, though Chalamet admitted he loves the attention. There's been a pandemic, it's been a long time, the people are screaming, the people are going crazy, so this is like, makes me turn up, yeah, turn up. Dune is in theaters and on HBO Max this Thursday. From the former queens of hip hop, why did they break up and where are they at? Several real queens of the music world ready to hit the small screen in the new ABC drama Queens. It's about a fictional all female rap group that topped the charts two decades ago, broke up, and now the women are ready for another shot at success. Singer and actress Brandy plays one of them. And I just love the fact that it was a 90s hip hop legendary group of women. I've never seen that even in hip hop today. Then it was never a hip hop girls group ever. Brandy stars alongside rapper Eve, singer and actress Naturi Naughton, and actress Nadine Velasquez. Queens debuts tonight on ABC. And his one is for the champion. Little Nas X, once again the champion of the charts, his single Industry Baby, hitting number one on the Billboard Hot 100 Singles chart. It's his third number one. And happy birthday to John Favreau. The Mandalorian executive producer is 55 today, while Community star Gillian Jacobs is 39. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Jason Athens in ABC News, Los Angeles. I've seen Little Nas X in those new commercials with Elton John. Oh, yeah. Yeah, is it, it's for what, Uber Eats, I think? Yeah. One of those food deliveries. Uber yeah, Uber Eats, Eats okay. yeah. Yeah, it's kind of funny. The good back and forth. They have good chemistry. I, I, I saw part of it, but I missed it. I'll yeah. have to go check it out. It runs a lot during uh, Sunday football. 456 right now, about 61 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA. New details this morning about the shipping delays blamed for shortages at supermarkets, clothing stores, and car dealerships. Plus, we'll have information about the FCC's latest proposal to block unwanted text messages. That is coming up in your Morning Tech Bites. And a quick look at the roads with Trans Guy. There's Loop 410 at Jackson Keller. Things looking okay there. Also, look at Loop 410 at New Braunfels Avenue. We're going to be checking in with Stephen Cavazos pretty soon. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Making headlines this morning, shipping delays continue to cause a rise in prices in everyday items at grocery stores and retail outlets. Outside with live cam, lower 60s, more humidity. That is the trend, according to Mike Ostrange. We'll also get an update on those weekend rainfall chances. Good morning, everybody. It is Tuesday. It is the 19th. Thanks for joining us today. It was a beautiful Monday and you know, today it's a little more humid when you wake up. It's still not too bad. Not bad at all. Uh, it's just a difference of what about 10 degrees Mike compared to yesterday. Yeah, roughly we uh, actually dropped down to 49 yesterday and right now we are in the uh, you know upper 50s and low 60s. So yeah, about 10 degrees humidity is up as well. First of all, uh, take a look at 
This picture right there, there's that beautiful, beautiful moon, which is now starting to set. We're looking off to the west right there. So obviously not a whole lot of cloud cover out there. We do have a few uh, high clouds kind of hanging around. And there you can actually see the moon in that uh, graphic as well. 60 right now. That uh, bottom number dew point temperature stands in the mid 50s. So it's still below 60 degrees. That's that uh, kind of threshold. However, that's about 10 above what it was, or in some cases close to 15 degrees, especially out in portions of the hill hill country dew point temperatures that much higher than what they were at this time yesterday 82 for a high today uh, we hit the upper 70s yesterday so again temperatures are going to continue that creeping upward trend all the way through the rest of the week the aquifer continued to go up another uh, half a foot yesterday and the allergens we do have low amounts of mold as well as ragweed out there i think we need to watch out for a couple of patches of fog there's still uh, like we've seen the past few days a little bit being reported around seguin that's the only spot as of right now but again we've got that extra humidity kind of coming on in here and as the morning rolls on i think we may see a few more patches of that. So just if you're out driving around, watch out for that, especially in low lying areas. So not as chilly this morning. So maybe a, a light jacket out there, a patch or two of fog, and then we are going to have partly cloudy skies. So still a nice looking day. Still nothing too outrageous as far as temperatures. As a matter of fact, low 80s. That's actually up to the normal, the average high temperature. But the rest of the week, of course, a little bit warmer, a little more humidity each and every day. And then going into the weekend, Couple of showers here or there, not really a big deal as it looks right now. Details in the weekend forecast coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority Stephen Cavazos is in the building. Good morning, sir. What's up? Hey, good morning, Mike. Well, we do have a few issues out there for our early morning birds, uh, but let's take a look right now, see how things are shaping up first around town. A few shots at Transguy does show that traffic is still very light, very quiet there off 281 at Bassey. One lonesome vehicle out there has the road to themselves, but uh, right now we're not spotting any issues on these cameras. However, those issues are out there. Uh, let's go ahead and take you to the map and show you what we're looking at right now. An incident has been detected right here off I-37 southbound at I-35. Now, our map has picked that up as a crash. We are working with our friends at Transguy to confirm uh, how this crash could possibly affect the morning commute. But uh, again, take it easy out over there. Uh, but uh, not the only thing we've spotted uh, as an issue so far. Let's go ahead and do some jumping around here. We did have a minor slowdown that looks like it improved, improved rather, rather uh, right before we came up here off I-10 westbound at East Houston Street, but you can see right now traffic moving at 68 miles per hour, so pretty normal there, but we're doing a big jump over here to the northwest side. Now, this is off of the highway, but at a busy road right at Shanefield Road and Cantor Horse Drive, a crash detected there, so uh, we actually have our Katrina Weber who will be live out there a little bit later to give us some details on that crash, but for now, we have started the morning off a little bit busier than normal, but nothing too crazy. It looks like we have an incident right by the airport that we'll have to keep an eye on, but these inbound times are pretty good so far. Green across the screen, 25 minutes on I-10 from Bernie, 25 from 281 and Volverde, and we're looking at 25 on 35 from New Braunfels to the downtown San Antonio area. Uh, one last look at Transguide shows again traffic still live, very quiet again off 281 at Bassey, but we'll be working to give you those updates on the early morning commute. Mark Stephanie. Thank you, Stephen. New this morning, San Antonio police say a woman was hurt after she crashed into a utility pole overnight on the northeast side. This happened just before three this morning at the intersection of Leonhardt and Encanta, just north of Wurzbach Parkway. Police say the woman was driving too fast around a corner, which caused her to crash right into the pole. SAPD says as a result, she had a pretty bad cut to her face and was taken to a hospital. CPS energy crews were called out to fix the pole. No one else was hurt. There are new details this morning about the shipping delays blamed for shortages at supermarkets, clothing stores, and car dealerships. A new record was just set, and it's not good news. ABC's Mona Kassar Abdi has the latest. This morning, the waiting line of cargo ships off the California coast is getting longer. A record 100 ships are waiting to enter the ports of Long Beach and Los Angeles. For comparison, an average of only 17 would typically be waiting. And 45 more ships are due to arrive by Thursday, adding to the supply chain backlog that's leading to empty store shelves across the country and higher prices the CEO of one toy making company says the cost of shipping supplies like cardboard and plastic have recently increased by 300 percent. He expects some toy prices to double by next year. When you have to go back to retailers and and offer them an item that used to retail for 20 or 25 dollars, it's now retailing for, you know, 30, 35, uh, maybe even 40. 
The Biden administration has taken steps to alleviate the logjam, announcing that the Port of Los Angeles will operate 24-7. But a trade group representing clothing manufacturers is demanding more action, suggesting, quote, the use of the National Guard or using naval ports to help unload cargo. Meanwhile, employers say they're alarmed by the shortage of workers. We have full medical and profit sharing plan and 401k. Um, I mean, we really have a nice package for employees, but it's been very difficult to, again, just to hire and maintain. Some companies are now offering bonuses to employees just for showing up to work. The census data reveals 5 million Americans were not working because the pandemic disrupted child care reliability. And 4 million said they couldn't work because they were caring for a COVID patient or had the virus themselves. Monaco Sarabdi, ABC News, New York. In Texas news, this year's ballot in November will have eight proposed state constitutional amendments on it. Two of them could change our justice system. Proposition 4 focuses on the requirements to become a judge in Texas. If passed, it would double the mandatory years of experience from four to eight for district judges and five to ten for judges who sit on the Supreme Court and the Criminal Court of Appeals. Proposition 5 makes changes to disciplinary actions for judicial candidates in Texas. If passed, they would be disciplines the same as already elected judges. Both bills are unanimously supported in both houses. Those amendments will be on the November 2nd ballot. Early voting is now underway. It'll last through next Friday. That's October 29th. Votes can be cast in person or by mail. For a list of early voting locations here in Bear County, head to our website at ksat.com. A Haitian doctor visiting San Antonio hopes the latest violent kidnapping of U.S. missionaries will raise awareness about the dire help needed in his home country. Dr. Anani Prosper serves with the Children Nutrition Program of Haiti, which is a community-based program that provides health services to those in need. He also travels back and forth to spread the word about what's happening in Haiti. Prosper says the country is dealing with a hunger crisis, a humanitarian crisis, and a failure of institutions. After all those suffering, we have to come together, as I say, with compassion, but also focus on the civil society to rebuild it step by step. Stay focus, have faith in God, and take our resolution as Haitians to stand up and work to fix our country. We can do it. Haitian officials have reported more than 300 kidnappings so far this year. White House Press Secretary Jen Psaki says the FBI is stepping in to help with negotiations for the missionaries' release. A reminder, SAWS will resume water shutoffs today. Following that pandemic moratorium, the shutoffs will only affect customers who have bills that are past due. However, they say most customers with high balances have been automatically enrolled in a four-year payment plan. We have more information on that at ksat.com. Right now, 508, about 60 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA, Google is getting set to the latest version of its flagship smartphone. That's later today. And next, what the city of San Antonio is doing right now to try to fix thousands of potholes across the city. And taking a look outside with a live cam. Beautiful shot right there. It's really pretty outside at 60 degrees. Uh, not as crisp as yesterday, but still nice. We'll be right back. 512 potholes continue to be a nuisance on our roads, but according to the city of San Antonio, it's something they've been trying to fix for years. The Pothole Patrol repaired over 80,000 potholes during their 2021 fiscal year. However, that is actually down from previous years. Stephen Cavazos joins us from the traffic lab this morning. And Stephen, why are we seeing a dip in these numbers? Yeah, 80,000 does sound like a lot, but the pandemic did create a number of issues for the city of San Antonio and city streets were not limited to those problems. But following the winter freeze, Pothole Patrol crews had to actually stop their work for one week and the number of calls to the 311 service actually went down down. However, progress was still made. Crews averaged just over 6,700 pothole repairs each month, and some of the busiest months include October with 8,400, March with over 8,100, and April with close to 10,000 repairs. But in total, only 6.5% of potholes were reported to the city. The Public Works Department anticipated an increase in pothole complaints
complaints following the winter storm, but the majority of the 80,000 potholes that were repaired were actually discovered by crews. So obviously still a big problem out on the roadway, but Public Works believes that more repairs could have been done if more calls were made to the 311 Pothole Patrol Service. They do guarantee that a resident, if a resident does report a pothole on a city street, it will be repaired in two business days. Guys. 513 about 60 degrees and coming up next how the FCC is helping to try to get rid of those annoying robo text messages. Welcome to Allstate. A place where everyone lives life well protected. And even when things go a bit wrong. We got your back. Here, things work the way you wish they would, and better protection costs a whole lot less. You're in good hands with Allstate. Click or call for a lower auto rate today. Finally getting there is the best, but with Febreze freshness in your car, driving there is pretty darn good too. Enjoy 30 days of freshness with Febreze car. La, 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 la. I used to re-rinse because mom did, but I wasted up to 20 gallons of water every time. Now, I'm just scrape and load. Finish Quantum Works without pre-rinsing. Cleaning your dishes to a shine. Join the millions of Americans skipping the rinse to save our water. In today's Tech Bytes, Google's new flagship phone, the Pixel 6, will be unveiled today. Reports say the starting price is around $600. The 6 Pro will be $300 more, but will also get a better camera. Apple has introduced its totally redesigned MacBook Pro laptop. It comes in two sizes, 14-inch and 16-inch. Apple says the chips inside are more powerful than competitors and what was in previous versions. There's also an improved microphone and webcam. Prices start at $1,500. The FCC is vowing to crack down on unwanted text messages that are flooding our phones. The agency is considering a proposal that would require wireless companies to block illegal robotechs, many of which are scams. They would expand on the rules already in place to curb robocalls. Hopefully it works. Those are your Tech bites. Have a great day. 517 time to check in with Stephen Cavazos. You know, the highways are looking really good uh, at this hour. We have not spotted any big issues. Uh, now, let's take a look right now, see how things are shaping up around town. 37 at Cesar Chavez. It is very quiet out there this morning, so perfect time to grab that cup of coffee and enjoy the drive to your destination. But taking a look around town, we still want to look at a few shots here. Loop 1604 right at Gulebna. Pretty dark, so make sure that you are driving carefully this morning, but you're not going to encounter any problems that should cause any uh, delays in your early morning drive. There's Loop 410 right at Jackson Keller. A few folks out there this morning, but overall these shots do show a pretty light commute so far. Uh, but we do want to take your attention right to this map. Now this is off of the highway over on the northwest side, uh, just past, six, past 1604 right at Shanefield Road at Cantor Horse Drive. Now there is a crash that was detected there a little bit earlier this morning. Our Katrina Weber will be live out there a little bit later to give us details on how this crash is impacting the roadways there. But right now uh, we aren't seeing any buildup of traffic out there on our maps. It does show that the lanes are so pretty green out there, so that's some good news. But as we take a wider look at the map, it's still pretty much the same. We're seeing a lot of green on the screen, and obviously that's pretty good news, especially if you're heading out the door in the next few moments. Again, you're not going to encounter any big issues on the highway that should cause delays for the morning commute, so no need to rush out the door. But let's take a look around uh, town one more time. 35 in New Braunfels does show a few more folks out there. Same at 35 at Alamo, but as always, drive safe. We're going to be watching the roads closely, guys. Thank you, Stephen. Hey, Stephen, we were looking at that picture. I was trying to tell Mike that it, I know it's not, but it reminds me of the movie E.T. <laughs> yeah. Oh, the moon. <laughs> I couldn't figure out what you were doing. She's going, no bicycle. E.T., <laughs> like the bike, horse, the little bike. I thought you were riding a horse. <laughs> Top of the temple over there in Stone Oak, right up on that big hill. That's a good picture, though. Wow, that's really, really cool looking. And yeah, beautiful, almost full moon. Technically, the moon is is full tomorrow, but yeah, it is gorgeous out there. And unfortunately, we can't see it in this picture because it's right there behind that banner. You can see that glow around it, but it's continuing to uh, set. So we do have some clouds out there, but obviously not enough to completely uh, just obscure the moon. Yesterday, 77 high temperature, uh, 86 Carrizo Springs, 87 in Catula, as well as Laredo. But overall, these numbers were a few degrees, about uh, say five or so below their at respective normals, the average uh, high temperatures. Today, though, we're going to be closer to where you would expect, right around 82 degrees. 
some uh, upper 70s out in the northwest portion of uh, Bear County and 83 for a high temperature today in Elmendorf and just slightly more humidity. Now these numbers are still below for the most part that threshold line right there, right at 60 degrees. That's you get above that. You can really start to kind of feel the humidity a whole lot more. Uh, walk outside this morning and Hey, eh, sort of smell a little bit more humidity than what we had the past couple of days and throughout the rest of today. We'll have some around here and notice how the southeasterly flow will continue to keep that humidity pumping on in here and these dew points are going to continue to go up into the mid 60s. And so yeah, the next few mornings you're definitely going to notice it when you step outside as far as humidity is concerned. All right, here's another long range computer model and this obviously is a little bit deceiving as far as it looks like it's completely clouded over. It's a lot of mid and high level moisture out there today, so I'm just going to call it partly cloudy skies. Same thing uh, the next couple of days. We'll have a lot of this some mid and high moisture around, so not completely clear skies, but just a, a little bit in the way of some clouds. Early, early Friday morning, there's a chance for a couple of showers. Obviously, this model has most of the, the rain over there in the mountains of Mexico, but maybe one or two of those little sprinkly showers can't completely rule one out. Uh, Friday, although kind of doubtful and same thing Saturday, even going into uh, the Saturday night as well as Sunday, one or two of those little showers around here, and that's going to be about the extent of any rain chances. So we've got high, which is pretty much dominating things as of right now and a big low out there to the northwest of us. Now, this is a, a good fall type pattern, but we're not seeing anything big coming down in our direction. All of these systems are kind of staying up there to the north, so that high is pretty much holding uh, holding tough down there. Now as we go into the latter part of the forecast and going into next week, another big trough is going to be developing out there and this one may actually try to pull a front through here sometime by about the middle part of next week. So until then, it is just going to be staying fairly warm and fairly humid. Um, today, not bad, sort of transitional day. 76 degrees at noon, partly cloudy skies. High temperature, we make it up to 82. Again, right around normal this time of year. And then tomorrow, not as low in the morning. We go up a couple of notches each and every day. Same thing with the high temperature. So by the end of the week and the weekend, we're looking at uh, mid 80s, mid to upper 80s and upper 60s on the high and low end of things, which respectively 5, 10 degrees above normal and one or two shower, maybe a shower or two over the weekend. So above normal, but still not in the 90s. So no, not in the, I'm close to it, though. There will be some out there. You know, we're looking at uh, 86, a lot of folks, 87, 88 degrees and then some humidity, too. Not like last weekend. <laughs> that fall weather didn't, just didn't stick around. The concrete didn't set on the fall weather. Okay. That is true. Well put. Never does. It's 523, about 60 degrees. And still heading your morning spotlight, the Mel Brooks film History of the World Part 1 finally gets a sequel. 40 years ago, a comedy legend rather gave us history of the world and some British women helped change the world. Both are back in the news. CNN's David Daniel explains in our Hollywood Minute. The Lord Jehovah has given unto you these 15. Hi. 10. 10 commandments for all to obey. Mel Brooks' History of the World Part 1 took audiences through the ages up to the French Revolution. Despite the title, Brooks never planned a sequel, but 40 years later, Hulu has announced an eight-episode variety series, History of the World Part 2. Brooks will be an executive producer and writer on the sequel. No word whether the 95-year-old Oscar winner will also perform in the show. We knew we were crazy, but we had to do it. All these women were with one purpose had come together. Mothers of the Revolution tells the true story of the British women credited with helping end the Cold War, marching and demonstrating for years in England, then traveling to the U.S. and Russia to spread their message of nuclear disarmament. The documentary about the Greenham Common Women and their historic protest is now available on digital platforms. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. And time now, it's 527 and it's about 60 degrees. Still ahead on GMSA, since the start of the pandemic, recent data shows that COVID-19 has killed five times more police officers than gunfire. Why there is still a great deal of pushback against the vaccinations. Plus, if you are constantly getting those pesky robocalls, we're going to tell you the best ways to get rid of them. And grocery stores already bracing themselves for a busy Thanksgiving season. 
And ahead on GMSA at 6, the story of a high school football coach and how he turned a struggling program around at Holmes High School. Making headlines this morning across the country, clashes between police and health officials intensifying over COVID-19 vaccinations. And taking a look outside with live cam this morning, uh, we are at 60 degrees, a little more humid than it was yesterday and this weekend. It is Tuesday, October 19th. Thanks for joining us today. Hope you had a great Monday and a beautiful weather weekend. But uh, this week, I guess things are going to start to change just a little bit. Mike told us about this. Altogether, still not a bad forecast, but we've uh, ramped things up uh, already this morning as far as humidity and temperatures. Yeah, they are up uh, oh, about 10 degrees from where it was at this time yesterday on both ends. The, uh, the measure moisture in the atmosphere and also temperatures. Um, nice, uh, nice moon out there. You can see there are a few wispy clouds hanging around and the moon is technically full tomorrow, but it is big and bright. Looks so beautiful, especially in the evenings when it's uh, coming up and yeah, great moon set out there. Temperature right now out at the airport. There's a little bit better view of the uh, the moon. It stands at 60, dew points at 55. So again, both of those numbers are up a good roughly 10. In some cases, dew points are up 15 degrees or even higher than that, especially out in portions of the hill country. Don't have much of a wind to deal with as of right now. Temperatures in parts of the hill country, very consistent, upper 50 50s, 58 right now in Fredericksburg. Still got a little patch of fog out there being reported right around Seguin. That's the only spot that's reporting it right now. I think we have to just be on the lookout for a, a hint or two of fog as we, the morning rolls on. Mold and ragweed are both on the low side and throughout the rest of today, we're going to make it up to 76 at noon, 82 high temperature. So plenty of sunshine out there, but a lot of those kind of mid clouds, a lot of the high wispy clouds hanging around here. Wind out of the south at 10 to 15 miles per hour will continue to pull in the humidity. It's not like it's going to be oppressively humid today. You'll just sort of sort of notice it a little bit more, and that's going to be the case as we go in through the rest of the week. What about the weekend? Details in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen Cavazos. You have good news on all the roads. <laughs> well, you know, the weather may not be as cool as it was on the weekend, but the roads are looking pretty cool and calm right now. Mike 37 at Jones Avenue shows a few folks still out there. Keep in mind it is still very early, but right now the roads are looking nice. You can enjoy that cup of coffee, turn up the music, uh, but as always drive carefully out there. Taking a few looks at from around town. Loop 410 at Babcock. There's a few folks again. Loop 410 at Jackson Keller. Traffic again relatively light. Now we talked about a few issues that were actually out on the roadways, and thankfully the good news is those have since resolved. As you can see, right now the map does show that it is still pretty green on the screen. Obviously the great news is uh, we're not encountering any issues on the highway. Now we did have a crash that was reported here just past 1604 in the northwest side of town uh, right at Shane Field and Cantor Horse Drive. Now I just talked to our Katrina Weber. Thankfully she gave us the update that that crash has since cleared and they haven't detected any damage out there. However, our map is still showing just a little bit of the buildup of traffic, but that's the great news there if you're traveling through the uh, 1604 area or perhaps even through Shane Field, which is a very busy road. Uh, but you're not going to find any issues out there this morning. And as we take a look at the map, so green across the board. If you're traveling to San Antonio from any of our neighboring communities in the next few moments, right now it's looking pretty green from Seguin on I-10 with 28 minutes on I-10 again. Uh, 22 minutes coming in from Lavernia on 87 and 28 minutes coming in from Flotusville. Uh, let's take one last look at Transguide I-37 at Cesar Chavez. Again, the roads are quiet, which gives us the time to talk about construction spots. That's coming up in the next few minutes here on GMSA. Mark Stephanie. Thank you, Stephen. COVID-19 is killing police officers all around the country. But there is still pushback from some law enforcement officers against vaccination requirements. And as CNN's Brett Conway reports, some cities and states are facing staffing shortages because of it. Michael Weiskopf, a police officer in St. Petersburg, Florida, died from COVID-19. Stephen DeFossis, an officer in Norton, Massachusetts, died from COVID-19. It's as absolutely as bad as you would imagine, to be raising two small girls without their dad. COVID-19 has become the leading cause of death for police officers since the pandemic began last year. That's according to the Officer Down Memorial page. But around the country, some police officers and unions are pushing back against vaccine requirements. In Chicago, about 4,500 police officers did not report their vaccination status by October 15th, as mandated by the city. In Massachusetts, the head of the troopers union says state police are missing nearly 600 uniformed members because of their refusal to comply with the vaccination mandate. 
In Seattle, the police union's president said the force lost some 300 officers over the past 18 months. In Washington state, a trooper filmed his final call after refusing to comply with the mandate. This is the last time you'll hear me in a state patrol car. And the Baltimore police union is telling officers not to reveal their vaccine status because of collective bargaining issues, according to the Baltimore Sun. But what could continued clashes mean for public safety? I think we're going to have to see who blinks first. I'm Britt Conway reporting. In Austin, Texas, Republicans have now officially approved redrawn U.S. House maps as part of redistricting. Governor Abbott is expected to sign off on the new maps, which much must rather reach his desk by today. However, some minority rights groups are suing Texas over those proposed voting maps, say they thwart the political strength of the state's Latino population. The lawsuit just filed in federal court comes as Texas legislature has given its final passage to the maps that sort the state's 30 million residents into new political districts for the next decade. Texas added nearly 4 million people over the last 10 years. More than half of those new residents are Latino. The Biden administration is asking the Supreme Court to block the Texas law banning most abortions while the fight over the measure's constitutionality plays out in the courts. The administration has also taken the unusual step of telling the justices they could grant the Texas law full review and decide its fate this term. No court has yet reached a decision on the constitutionality of the Texas law, and the Supreme Court rarely grants such requests. Law has been in effect since September. Aside from a short pause, it bans abortions once cardiac activity is detected. Time check 537, about 59 degrees. And you probably noticed that the price of bacon and other pork products is a little higher these days, why some experts think it could get even higher. Even though we've seen a recent drop, Americans still receive about 4.3 billion robocalls every month. Up next, some easy things you can do to limit the amount of calls you get. And taking a look outside with live cam, that humidity is starting to creep back in. We are at 59 degrees, but every day this week we'll see a little bit more humidity, I believe. We'll be checking in with Mike soon. Welcome back 540. Believe it or not, robocalls are decreasing. The number of robocalls received in the U.S. in August fell 4.4 percent from July. But that doesn't mean they're completely gone. R.J. Marcus tells us the best ways to avoid them. Even with a drop in the number of robocalls, U.S. consumers still receive an average of 4.3 billion unwanted calls a month so far this year. So what can you do to limit them? Consumer Reports put together a list of suggestions, including how to optimize your phone to block the calls. Many mobile phones have a white listing tool that will only allow calls from your contacts. And you can turn the feature off if you're expecting a call from someone not in your contacts, like a delivery person. Consumer Reports offers details on how to access the tool on iPhone, Android, and Google devices. There are also steps you can take to make sure all of the basic robocall blocking features on your phone are activated. AT&T, Verizon, and T-Mobile all have various free services, but some may need to be enabled. There are various third-party call blocking apps available, and some wireless carriers also offer separate call blocking services for more protection. RJ Marcus, KSAT 12 News. 541, about 59 degrees. And next, if you're planning on having a big Thanksgiving feast with a lot of turkey, why you may need to get your order in sooner than later. And welcome back. It's 544. In your morning consumer headlines with many Americans vaccinated against COVID-19, analysts predict bigger gatherings for Thanksgiving this year compared to last. And that means the demand for more turkey on Turkey Day. Grocery store chains are stocking up on large turkeys ahead of this Thanksgiving holiday, and we're talking like 18 to 24 pounders. A spokesperson from the U.S. Department of Agriculture said production of fresh turkeys is down, but frozen turkeys shouldn't be hard to find. If you have your heart set on a fresh turkey of any size, be sure to order soon just to be safe. Well, you probably have already seen those higher prices for bacon at stores, but now pork prices are now expected to rise even higher. And a new law may soon change how pork is raised and sold in the U.S., which could even mean higher prices. CNN's Jen Sullivan explains. Pork is already taking bigger bites out of budgets. And now pork producers say a new animal welfare law is about to make bringing home the bacon more expensive. In the past two to three months, it has done nothing but go up and it hasn't been by cents, it's been by dollars. 
Pork prices have been skyrocketing during the pandemic due to inflation and supply chain issues. And now there's another reason. California, pork's largest U.S. market, is adopting a new law that raises living condition standards for pigs. The measure takes effect next year, but pork producers are already spooked. Under the new law, mother pigs must be given at least 24 square feet of space each and kept out of gestation crates where their movement is severely restricted. Pork producers are already warning the new law may bring added costs throughout the supply chain and ultimately leave shoppers across the country with fewer and more expensive options. Economists say it may add about $8 to each person's annual spending on pork. One of the reasons why we are faced with uh, beef and pork uh, shortages is because we lack processing capacity. We need more competition uh, in that space. For today's Consumer Watch, I'm Jen Sullivan. What do you say we check traffic? Let's go ahead and check in with Stephen, although from the cameras here, things look okay. Yeah, don't jinx us just yet, Steph. Uh, <laughs> right now, things are pretty quiet. 35 at New Braunfels. Things on the highway have been quiet throughout the morning, although it looks like it was getting a little bit busier on that shot of Trans Guide. 35 at Alamo does show pretty smooth start so far. We're getting a little bit of a camera span there. Our pan, I should say, at Loop 410 at San Pedro. Uh, I'm not sure what was going on there, but we'll keep a close eye on 410. But very quiet, quiet there off 37 as Cesar Chavez, and the same goes for Jones Avenue. But let's take you right to the map. Now, we were going to get construction right off the top of this traffic hit, but we were we want to bring you back to this crash right off Shanefield Road and Cantor Horse Drive. Actually, our Katrina Weber is there now. That crash did clear Katrina. I know it was pretty dark out there, very difficult to spot some damage, but looks like you may have found something. Well, yeah, actually, there were people injured here as well as some damage. Uh, this cleared just about 15 minutes ago. Now, if you woke up earlier this morning and had no power, this could possibly be the reason. Uh, you can see that power pole just sheared right in half. At one point, there were hundreds, if not thousands, of people in this general area, and some of them, at least some of them, police say, were attributed to what happened here. This car was coming east on Shanefield Road. It hit the median, according to police, and then rolled over into the field. Uh, right after it sheared this pole in half. Uh, this happened around 3 o'clock this morning. Now, police say they got here. They found three people outside the car. They say at least one of those, if not all three, were ejected from the car. They were rushed to a hospital. Police say they had injuries, serious injuries, but there were no life-threatening injuries. But again, uh, a lot of damage that was done here, at least to this power pole, knocked out electricity for a while, but police did tell us, and also CPS Energy map shows that the power has been restored in this area after that crash earlier this morning. Reporting live in Helotus, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. All right, Katrina, thank you. Be safe out there. Now, while that crash did clear out a few minutes ago, uh, we want to bring your attention up to I-10 really quick. We did mention we were going to talk about some construction. Uh, the final overlay work will be happening later today uh, from a, that will lead to a single eastbound main lane closure right here on I-10 from Scenic Loop Road to Balcones Creek. The good news is this should be wrapping up. Uh, again, the final overlay work, it'll be happening from today, October 19th, up to October 22nd. It is overnight, 9 in the evening to 5 in the morning, so make sure you are planning accordingly. But again, the highway's have have been quiet right now. Aside from that crash that we did see Katrina add a little bit earlier. Uh, thankfully, the morning commute looks like it's shaping up to be pretty nice, but we know things could change as more people get out there. All right, here's a beautiful view. It looks like kind of a watercolor painting. This was in Dilly after the uh, sun went down yesterday. Absolutely gorgeous. We're going to have another uh, good looking sunrise and good looking sunset. And now we can see the moon has dropped down below this banner and there's the uh, beautiful not quite full moon just about to set off in the uh, the western sky. Temperature right now is at 60, 59 in Port SA and mid 50s in parts of the hill country. So these numbers are up a good 10 degrees compared to yesterday. Still maybe a, a light jacket for the kids, especially in the hill country. And these numbers are also up the dew points, the measure of moisture in the atmosphere. Uh, we're still comfortable, still below 60, but it's been going up and that's going to be the trend throughout the rest of the week that those numbers will continue to go up uh, ever so slightly. So we do have a few clouds hanging around here this morning, but obviously we can see the moon, so it's not a complete cloud cover as of right now. And I think that's going to be the case throughout much of the day, just kind of some of these broken mid high level clouds and uh, around the country. Obviously, there's a big low which is circulating right there, just about centered on Salt Lake City, producing a lot of uh, rain and some snow in the higher elevations. That's not going to really have any uh, any direct impact on our weather. 
weather. What we are going to be looking at, though, is the, as I mentioned about temperatures and dew points, those numbers, so those dew points are going to be coming up. So you get above 60, you start to kind of feel it tomorrow morning. It'll be slightly milder. And then as we go into the rest of the week, yeah, it's going to be leaning toward the, the humid side with these numbers up in the mid and then leaning toward the upper 60s. And what that's going to do, obviously, is make it feel warmer, but also temperatures, low temperatures can't drop down below those numbers. So that's going to hold the low temperatures much warmer, mid and even upper 60s going into the latter part of the week. So we'll have, and this kind of depicts uh, more clouds than what we're going to be having out there. A lot of high level moisture as well. And uh, call it partly cloudy skies pretty much tomorrow, today, tomorrow. Same thing on Thursday. Late Thursday, uh, a couple of sprinkly showers are going to be possible. Not very likely, maybe one or two of them scattered about here or there uh, going in towards Saturday, perhaps Sunday, late Saturday, early uh, throughout the day on Sunday, pardon me, and uh, maybe the first part of next week, but not any really great, great rain chances around here as we go in through even the first part of next week. That high is pretty much dominating things and keeping all these weather systems. It's good active fall pattern up to the north, but for us, we're staying pretty tranquil, very consistent and slightly on the above normal side. Now we may have something a little more potent as far as a front, perhaps by the mid to latter part of next week, but that's really the only or the first time any significant change is going to be coming about 76 degrees today at noon and then a high temperature up to 82 later on this afternoon tomorrow up a couple of degrees in the morning and as well as the afternoon and that's going to be the case each and every day we will be in the uh, kind of mid and upper 80s mid and upper 60s the high and the low respectively going into the weekend and again a shower or two just kind of a mention of it that's about the extent of it going into the weekend no canceling plans though you said no no not at all very good. Thanks, Mike. 552, about 59 degrees. The director of Blade Runner 2049 and Arrival bringing a classic of sci-fi literature to the screen. We're going to have a special look at Dune next. Here are your lottery numbers, including Powerball. Pick 3, 656, six, Fireball 7. Your daily four number, 7051, Fireball 4. Cash 5, 1, 3, 16, 23, 32, and your Texas two-step 5, 17, 20, 32, bonus ball 28, and your Powerball numbers 30, 32, 48, 53, 63, Powerball 12, Power Play 2. Good luck. Good morning. Coming up here on GMA, the latest on the search for the American missionaries kidnapped in Haiti, now missing for four days. The FBI making contact with the gang suspected of the abduction. We're going to get into all of that and so much more right here on GMA. You inherit too much power. You have proven you can rule yourself. Now you must learn to rule others. Timothy Chalamet stars in Denis Villeneuve's adaptation of Frank Herbert's Dune. One of the first scenes I've done with Timothy was the gum jabar scene. The test is simple. Remove your hand from the box and you die. I witness a physical transformation into a, into a polatrides in his face and there's something that came up uh, from Timothy that day that uh, if you had seen me behind the monitor, I was and crying and dancing of joy because I said, oh my God, he's truly Paul Atreides. If anything happens, will you protect Paul with my life? Rebecca Ferguson portrays Paul's mother, Lady Jessica. Oh, she's so complex and layered. She's not just strong and cool and a concubine. It, 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 you know, this woman will put her son in front of a test where the outcome can become death for the greater belief. Fear is the mind killer. My Lord Duke. Where the fear is gone, only I will remain. In Hollywood, I'm Rick Damagella. Got my tickets for Saturday. All right, folks, here's a look at two pop-up vaccine clinics happening today. There's one at University United Methodist Church on Days of Allah. It's from 4 to 8 p.m. There's another at the Antioch Sports Complex on Eros Street. That one's from uh, starts at 9 a.m. For more information, go to our website at ksat.com. Ahead in our next hour, GMSA San Antonio Police looking for a man they believe robbed a Westside subway about a month ago. We'll have more on that case. 
And checking Transguide right now, heavier traffic at I-35. It looked like New Braunfels, 35 at Alamo. Also, traffic is building as we wait for the sun to come up on your early Tuesday morning. Stephen Cavazos is back with more on that and a notable rise in humidity. We'll check in with Mike Ostrage again coming up in just a bit. Ahead in this hour, GMSA, a woman crashes her vehicle into a pole on the northeast side, but the crash affected hundreds of people. We'll tell you what we know. And taking a look outside with live cam this morning, we're starting your day right now at 59 degrees and humidity being somewhat of a creeper and creeping back in this morning. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. <laughs> That's a new one. Humidity is being a creeper this morning. Yes. And you all have to deal with it. Good morning, everybody. <laughs> it is Tuesday. It is October 19th. Happy Tuesday. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, I mean, we had kind of gotten used to not having humidity around and well, here he, here it, he is. <laughs> it crept back in overnight and maybe looking through the curtains. Mike Osterhage, good morning. Good morning. Uh, this is a perfect picture of what's going on out there this morning. There is the beautiful, beautiful moon. It is almost full, technically full tomorrow. And as you can see it's hidden just barely by a couple of clouds out there. Gorgeous, kind of looks very, very fallish, very Halloweenish, and uh, that's going to be the case as far as cloud cover throughout the rest of the morning. There's a, still a hint of fog being reported around uh, Seguin right now. That's the only spot that has a little bit of it out there. With the uh, obviously we've got some clouds, we've got moisture aloft in the atmosphere, and this is going to be sticking around throughout much of the day. It's not going to be a complete cloud cover, but just you know. A couple of them scattered about here and there. And actually the cloud cover, a little bit of cloud cover is helping to act like somewhat of a blanket and preventing a lot more widespread fog. But again, I think there's still the uh, the chance for it, especially in some of the low lying areas. Mold and ragweed are both on the low side and throughout the rest of the morning temperatures are going to stay fairly steady where they are right now. Um, upper 50s, low 60s, up about 10 degrees compared to this time yesterday, as are the dew point temperatures, the measure of moisture in the atmosphere, which means there is more humidity out there. It's still not oppressive when you walk outside, but you kind of you just sense a little more humidity out there. 76 degrees at noon, partly cloudy skies and a high temperature. We're going to make it up to 82. That's right about what you would expect this time of year, about five above yesterday. And then that number is going to continue to sort of just creep up a couple, be a creeper like the humidity throughout, as Steph would say, throughout the next uh, couple of days. Maybe a rain chance way down the road. We'll talk about that in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen Cavazos, any traffic creeping along? <laughs> uh, no, right now things are looking pretty Pretty quiet, Mike. As you can see right now, I-10 at ProBand getting a little bit busier, but yeah, we're not finding any crashes that are creeping up around the corner there. If we're going to keep that up going here, but 35 at Alma, just a few folks out there right now at this hour. So again, very calm uh, start to the morning on the highways. Have not spotted any issues that would cause any impact for your early morning drive, but keep in mind you want to make sure you are checking those vehicles because we do have some stalls that are popping up. I-10 eastbound at Fair Oaks Parkway, a little bit further up. So again, on I-10, make sure that you're driving carefully and Watch out for those drivers, especially when they have their emergency lights on or even when it's really dark outside and you're, you can't see them. So I-35 southbound at St. Mary Street, another stalled vehicle reported out there. So right now, uh, haven't spotted any serious crashes on the highways that could cause any potential delays for that early morning drive. So enough time to head out the door and grab that cup of coffee. These inbound times, Pleasant Drive from 37, uh, coming in from Pleasanton on with 28 minutes right now to the downtown San Antonio area. 17 minutes coming in from Lytle and 35 and coming in from Highway 90 in Castroville. We're looking at just 18 minutes at this hour. So one last look at Transguide as we take a look around town, getting a little bit busier. We know it's obviously a little bit past six, so more people are out there. Just drive carefully and we'll continue to watch these roads closely. Guys. A crash in Lotus has sent three people to the hospital. Also had an impact on hundreds of other people in that area. Katrina Weber is live where it happened at Shanefield Road near Cantor Horse. And Katrina, what can you tell us so far? Well, I can tell you that the hundreds of people who were affected were uh, affected by a power outage uh, that this crash caused. Those people are, uh, have been restored right now. The three people in the hospital, the last word we had is that they had serious injuries, possibly all three ejected from the car that crashed here. But take a look at the damage that are left behind uh, this pole that was just sheared in half. That car was heading east on Shanefield Road when police say uh, the driver hit the median. There's a concrete median in the middle there. It, that sent the car rolling into this pole and then into the field. 
Uh, when police got here, they found all three people outside the car. They say at least one of those, possibly all three, were ejected from the car. Uh, police say they did not suffer uh, what appeared to be life-threatening injuries, they, but they did have serious injuries. They were rushed to a hospital. Meanwhile, uh, there were people here in this area who were out without power due to this crash, but CPS Energy was out here earlier. They were able to restore the power, but we understand they're going to come back to take care of this pole and the power lines that are down on the ground. Uh, but that is the situation for now. Police say an out-of-control car is what caused all of this and sent those people to the hospital. Reporting live in Holotus, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. New this morning, police say a woman was hurt after she crashed her vehicle into a utility pole overnight on the northeast side. It happened just before 3 this morning at the intersection of Leon Hart and Encanta, just north of Wurzbach Parkway. Officers tell us that the woman was driving too fast around a corner, causing her to crash into the pole. She ended up with a pretty bad cut on her face and was taken to the hospital, but she is expected to be okay. This year's ballot in November will have eight proposed state constitutional amendments on it. Two of them could change the justice system here in Texas. Proposition 4 focuses on the requirements to become a judge in Texas. If passed, it would double the mandatory years of experience from four to eight for district judges and five to ten for justices who sit on the Supreme Court and the judges on the Criminal Court of Appeals. Prop 5 makes changes to disciplinary actions for judicial candidates. If passed, they would be disciplined the same as already elected judges. Both bills were unanimously supported by both houses. And those amendments will be on the November 2nd ballot. Early voting is now underway. It will last through next Friday on October 29th, and votes can be cast in person or by mail. For a list of early voting locations in Bear County, you can head over to our website at kset.com. Former President Donald Trump wants to keep a lid on some of the records from his term in office. The former president has filed a loss against the House Select Committee looking at the January 6th siege at the U.S. Capitol and the National Archives. He is trying to prevent Congress from obtaining former White House documents. The former president also directing former White House aide Steve Bannon not to answer questions in the probe. The National Archives expected to hand over the requested document sometime next month. The committee is scheduled to meet today. It will vote on whether Bannon should be referred to the Justice Department for criminal contempt charges. There's new details this morning, or rather there are new details this morning about the shipping delays blamed for shortages at supermarkets, clothing stores, and even car dealerships. A new record was just set, and it's not good news. ABC's Mona Kassar Abdi has the latest. This morning, the waiting line of cargo ships off the California coast is getting longer. A record 100 ships are waiting to enter the ports of Long Beach and Los Angeles. For comparison, an average of only 17 would typically be waiting. And 45 more ships are due to arrive by Thursday, adding to the supply chain backlog that's leading to empty store shelves across the country and higher prices the CEO of one toy making company says the cost of shipping supplies like cardboard and plastic have recently increased by 300 percent. He expects some toy prices to double by next year. When you have to go back to retailers and, and offer them an item that used to retail for 20 or 25 dollars, it's now retailing for, you know, 30, 35, uh, maybe even 40. To the Biden administration has taken steps to alleviate the logjam, announcing that the Port of Los Angeles will operate 24-7. But a trade group representing clothing manufacturers is demanding more action, suggesting, quote, the use of the National Guard or using naval ports to help unload cargo. Meanwhile, employers say they're alarmed by the shortage of workers. We have full medical and profit sharing plan and 401k. Um, I mean, we really have a nice package for employees, but it's been very difficult to, again, just to hire and maintain. Some companies are now offering bonuses to employees just for showing up to work. The census data reveals 5 million Americans were not working because the pandemic disrupted child care reliability. And 4 million said they couldn't work because they were caring for a COVID patient or had the virus themselves. Monaco Sarabdi, ABC News, New York. And our traffic authority coverage continues this morning as we keep an eye on potholes around town. They are down for the 2021 fiscal year with a little over 80,000 pothole repairs. Stephen Cavazos is in the traffic lab this morning with all the details. Good morning, Stephen.
Good morning, Steph. Well, with something we've been keeping our eye on, a spokesman for the Public Works Department does tell me that the pandemic was already causing a number of issues for the city, but the winter freeze forced pothole patrol crews to stop their work for one week. And despite Public Works anticipating an increase in pothole problems, there was also a dip in the number of calls to 311. Now, however, these there were still some progress that was made. Crews averaged 6,745 pothole repairs each month. Now, some of the busiest months include October with 8,000 486 March with 8,165 in April with close to 10,000. But in total, only 6.5% of potholes were reported to the city. Now, the majority of the 80,000 potholes that were repaired were actually discovered by crews. So obviously, it's still a pretty much a pesky problem out on the roadways. But Public Works does believe that more repairs could have been done if more calls were actually made to 311. Now, the Pothole Patrol does guarantee that if a resident reports a pothole on a city street, it will be repaired in two business days. You can visit our website at ksat.com to learn more. Mark Stephanie. Thanks, Steve. And a reminder, SAWS will resume water shutoffs today. A moratorium has been in place during the pandemic. Shutoffs will only affect customers who have past due balances. However, most of them with high balances have automatically been enrolled in a big payment plan program. For more details, head to ksat.com. And time now at 610 and it's about 59 degrees out there. Could we soon be able to mix and match COVID vaccines? I'm Alex Perche in Washington. Coming up, the big decision ahead of the FDA. And outside with live cam, lots more humidity this morning. A thin veil of clouds out there. And we're starting today at uh, right around 60 degrees. So add 10 to about where we were to start our Monday. More with Mike and your forecast coming up. Now to the COVID-19 pandemic across the country. Though the U.S. appears to be turning the corner on a surge of COVID cases, battles are still brewing over mask and vaccine mandates. ABC's Alex Perche has the latest this morning from Washington. This morning, the FDA is considering whether Americans should mix and match their COVID booster shots. A source telling ABC News the FDA is moving towards recommending people get boosters that match their original doses, but could give leeway to healthcare providers with certain patients to allow a shot from a different brand. I think mixing and matching would reduce supply chain complexity quite a bit, and so the end result would be more boosters and more arms, and that matters a lot. It comes amid some good news. Coronavirus cases are steadily falling across the country, down 50% since the beginning of September. Meanwhile, thousands gathered across California Monday opposed to the state's vaccine mandate for students. These parents protesting outside the state capitol. The harder they push, the louder we'll get. California teachers are now required to get the shot. All students will soon follow once the vaccine is fully approved for their age groups. A vaccine requirement's nothing new. This one joining a list of 10 others required for school, just like measles and mumps. I'm not a parent that wants my child to be controlled by the government or myself as a family by the government. So I want my child to not be vaccinated. In Chicago, 35% of the police department hasn't reported their vaccination status and risk losing their job. In the sports world, the NHL has suspended the San Jose Sharks Evander Kane 21 games for submitting a fake vaccination card. He'll forfeit nearly $1.7 million of his salary this season. And Washington State has fired head football coach Nick Rolovich and four assistants for refusing the state mandated vaccine. The school breaking the news to players. I mean, it's just unfortunate. This team, they don't deserve this. I mean, that that is a, um, a real point of heartbreak. And at midnight, a vaccine mandate went in place in Seattle. The city reporting that 99 percent of its 11,000 employees have complied. Alex Perche, ABC News, Washington. It's now 616. And traffic is starting to build out there. Let's go ahead and check back with Stephen Cavazos. It is getting a little bit busier out there, Mark and Steph. As we take a look at Trans Guy, definitely a few of these shots show that a lot more folks are out there this morning. You can see pretty evident there on these shots again that we're taking a look at. Pretty quiet on this particular area of town, right at 281 at San Pedro, uh, but definitely getting busier there off I-35 at 37. So still dark out there. Make sure that you are taking it easy on the roads. Take a look at 35 at Eisenhower. We know that's pretty much a hot spot for traffic delays. So uh, make sure that. You 
you are traveling carefully and pack that patience this morning, but uh, also make sure you're checking those vehicles. We continue to remind you we are seeing a lot more of these stalls on our map. This one's still detected right at I 10 eastbound at Fair Oaks Parkway. The good news is it is not causing any delays, but watch out for those drivers and the Texas hero trucks if you see them out there because it is shaping up to be a morning of stalls. That's the trending issue. We see this one off Loop 410 eastbound at Nacogdoches Road. And as we take a jump down over here, we saw the stall reported off I 35 southbound at St. Mary Street. So again, make sure your vehicles are working properly. It's not stopping there. A Loop 410 westbound at Somerset Road. So make sure the tires are working, windshield wipers, fuel levels, everything good to go before you get your morning started this morning. Uh, we take one last look at Transguide around town. Definitely getting a little bit busier out there. So although it is shaping up to be a quiet morning, you don't want to experience any trouble on the highways, especially when we get more vehicles out there. We'll be watching the roads closely here in the traffic lab, guys. All right. Thank you, Stephen. And the humidity is up, but still in some areas, maybe a light jacket, Mike. Yeah, I mean, it's not it's up compared to the past couple of days. It's not like it's oppressively humid or anything like that. Now, we'll continue to creep upward as we go in through the next few days. Right now we are at uh, low 60s, upper 50s, much of the area. There's a patch of fog around Seguin. That's about it as of right now. And again, you may need a light jacket. You won't need it this afternoon, though. 82 degrees and again, partly cloudy skies today. This is an absolutely gorgeous picture. It looks like a painting. How beautiful is that? Wow. Wow. That is so pretty. Those beautiful blue skies out there. River Padre Park right after the rain. Look at how green everything is. And there's the moon setting and a few clouds as you can see off in the distance. Great picture there. All right. It has been definitely a wet October. We had plenty of rain basically last week, more than five and a half inches, and that puts us almost three and a half inches above normal since September the 1st. We are a little more than two inches above normal, so obviously do the math. September was kind of on the dry side, and for the year, we're on the above normal side by about three and three quarter inches, about four and three quarter inches of rain, but it's been kind of off and on. Most of the months have been on the dry side. We started off very, very dry, and then all of a sudden we had an extremely wet April as well as May, June. Faucets almost got shut off, and then July once again had a big a bunch of rain. Then August and September, it was on the dry side again, and then you get all that rain all at once. So it's been like four periods, and uh, you know we had those weeks at times where it's like four or five days, and it just rained, and then it cut off again. So that's uh, it's been feast or famine all year long, and at least we are on the above normal side as of right now. We've got uh, some mid and high level clouds out there, and these are going to be sticking around throughout much of the day. So we'll have uh, eh, partly cloudy skies, we'll call it. Big uh, storm system right there in the great, or excuse me, in the uh, Rockies. And that's producing obviously some snow, some uh, rain as well, but that's not going to have any real direct impact on our weather. It's going to be staying basically up to the north of us. We'll have partly cloudy skies throughout uh, the rest of the week. More clouds in the morning, a little more sunshine mixed in in the afternoon. Late Thursday night, early Friday, there's a disturbance that's going to move through. A shower or two is possible, not very likely. And then we go into the weekend. One or two showers are going to be possible Saturday, uh, maybe into Sunday, as well as the first part of next week. But those are not great rain chances as we go into the weekend. Maybe something then way down the road, mid to the latter part of next week. 76 degrees today at noon, partly cloudy skies. And the high temperature is going to make it up to 82 just about the normal high this time of year. And it's not like it's going to be humid out there, but uh, you might want to keep the air conditioning on as opposed to opening up the windows. Next few days, temperatures are going to go up a few notches on both ends of the scale, mid and upper 80s, mid and upper 60s by the weekend. Again, a shower or two, but overall, it's just going to be not fallish. <laughs> yeah, that way. definitely back to the AC, Mike Osterhage. Yeah, it's not going to be. Well, it's going to be leaning hot side. So leaning hot, leaning uh -oh. hot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, well. We'll wait for the fall. Wait for the fall to creep back in. Yes. 621, about 59 degrees. And how often are you getting robo-texts? The FCC is getting tough on unwanted text messages. Details after the break. What can I do with less asthma? With Depixent, I can do more. Yeah. Yard work. Like Teamwork. Long walks. Game on! That's 
That's how you do more with Depixin, which helps prevent asthma attacks. Depixin's not for sudden breathing problems. It's an add-on treatment for specific types of moderate to severe asthma that can improve lung function with better breathing in as little as two weeks. It can reduce or even eliminate oral steroids. And here are some of the important. Depixin can cause serious allergic reactions, including anaphylaxis. Get help right away if you have rash, shortness of breath, chest pain, tingling, or numbness in your limbs. Tell your doctor if you have a parasitic infection, and don't change or stop your asthma treatments, including steroids, without talking to your doctor. Are you ready to do more with less asthma? Hey, come on. Just ask your asthma specialist about Depixin. In today's Tech Bytes, Google's new flagship phone, the Pixel 6, will be unveiled today. Reports say the starting price is around $600. The 6 Pro will be $300 more, but you'll also get, we are told, a better camera. Apple has introduced its totally redesigned MacBook Pro laptop. It comes in two sizes, 14-inch and 16-inch. Apple says the chips inside are more powerful than competitors and what was in previous versions. There is also an improved microphone and webcam. Prices start at $1,500. The FCC vowing to crack down on wanted, unwanted text messages flooding our phones. The federal agency considering a proposal that would require wireless companies to block illegal robotechs, many of which are scams. But already expand our rules already in place to curb robocalls. And time now, it's 625 and it's about 59 degrees out there. Game three of the ALCS, not kind to the Houston Astros. And we've got a preview of game four ahead on GMSA. And we're going to have the details on a robbery at a subway on the west side that happened about a month ago. Police are still looking for this suspect. You could receive a cash reward. And Transguide right now looking at traffic. I-10 and Frio heading in and out of downtown. There's 10 at ProBan. Stephen is back with another look at your morning commute. Three people are in the hospital with injuries after a crash here in Holotus. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber. I'll tell you how that crash also impacted many other people. That's coming up. Outside with live cam hovering right around 60 degrees, so nowhere near as crisp as the last couple of mornings. Mike is standing by with your forecast. And good morning, everybody. It is Tuesday, October 19th. Happy Tuesday. Thanks for joining us. Hope you enjoyed yesterday's beautiful weather. Uh, humidity is back, but not too bad out there yet. Uh, as Steph said earlier, it kind of crept back in overnight. Yes, it did. Sneaky humidity. You know, if we didn't have yesterday and the weekend to compare today to, you know, because that was just perfect yesterday and yeah. the weekend. Yeah, right. So That's today, all true. We'll give you that. Yeah, so <laughs> today, I mean, today's not bad. Just can't compare to the past couple of days. We do have a few clouds uh, hanging around here, and I don't know if the moon has actually set yet or if it's snuck behind some of those uh, low clouds hanging around here. We were seeing it off in this picture. And uh, temperature right now is about 10 degrees above what it was at this time yesterday. Remember yesterday, we were right around 50 and dropped down to the upper 40s when it was all said and done. And one of the reasons for that, not only is some cloud cover, but also that number is much higher because you can't drop down below what the dew point is, and it's at 55 degrees right now. And again, a couple of those clouds. We've still been seeing that little patch of fog there around uh, around Seguin this morning, and it's still reporting just a little bit of fog. Mold and ragweed are on the low side, and throughout the day we're going to have, uh, well, of course, not as chilly this morning, although Depends on where you are. You may need, especially in the hill country, a, a light jacket. One or two patches of fog here or there. Partly cloudy. Low 80s for high temperature, which is about what we'd expect this time of year. That's the average normal high. And then rest of the week, it is going to start to get just a little warmer each and every day. A little more humidity each and every day. And then going into the weekend, it's going to be mild. Um, I wouldn't even really be that concerned about a couple of showers. One or two of them here and there. It actually doesn't look like we'll see anything as far as any significant rain till probably toward the middle part of next week. Details on that in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen Cavazos. Doesn't seem like there's been a heck of a lot of big yeah, stuff out there. It, it, not on the Transguide cameras, uh, and, and that's good news, especially because we know we have over 200 that are watching the roads right now. And here's just a peek at some of the way uh, things are looking around town right now. You can see the traffic moving through Loop 410 at Jackson Keller, 281 at St. Pedro. Pretty smooth from these shots, but uh, keep in mind these don't show everything that's happening. We really want to bring your attention right 
right here to 1604 southbound right at FM 78. Now, while there's no trans guide cameras that are detected in that area, our friends over at the Universal City Police Department have reported a pretty serious crash. that's obviously impacting traffic in these southbound lanes. Uh, now they are advising that anybody that travels through this area or travels through this area normally try to avoid it because it is going to cause a big delay right now. As you can see again, reflected out our maps right at FM 78. That includes if you're trying to access the Randolph Air Force Base West Gate on 1604. So again, start planning those alternative routes. We're going to be looking at that crash pretty closely throughout the morning, uh, but let's take a few jumps here. We do have some stalls still to talk about that one still out there at I 10 eastbound at Fair Oaks Parkway. Not a good day for that driver. Hopefully they'll be receiving some assistance soon. It has been there for quite a while. Uh, taking a jump back into town, though, I 35 southbound at St. Mary Street still have that stall there. It has been a morning of stalls along with that crash, but this one off Loop 410 westbound at Somerset Road getting a little bit busier, but not so drastic that you're going to see any delays, but we're going to continue to keep our eyes on 1604 southbound and see how that could impact that morning drive. Just remember to avoid that area and watch out for those first responders. Mark Stephanie. Thank you, Stephen. Three people who are traveling in a car through Holotus have made an unexpected detour to a hospital. They were all injured in a crash early this morning on Shanefield Road near Cantor Horse. Katrina Weber is now there with a live report. And Katrina, you mentioned earlier this affected many other people in the form of power outages. The power is back on, but it looks like the damage is still there. Yes, the damage is still here, Stephanie. Uh, we actually have a contractor here right now who looks like he's starting some of the repair work. But uh, CPS Energy was able to temporarily shift some lines and uh, to get the power back up because there were hundreds of people, if not thousands, who were affected. Uh, earlier this morning, what happened is uh, police tell us that a car that was heading east on Shanefield accidentally hit the median, that concrete median in the middle of the street. That sent the car flying right through this electric pole and then it rolled over into the field. Now, when police got here, they say that there were three people who they found outside the car with injuries. They say that at least one of those people was ejected from the car, maybe all three of them. They suffered serious injuries, according to police, but none life-threatening. They were taken to a hospital, and police were here for the next few hours. This happened about 3 o'clock this morning. Police were here right up until almost 5.30 trying to clear this scene. Uh, we did see them tow away the car, and then, of course, again, the damage still here that CPS Energy will tackle a little bit later on this morning. Reporting live in the Lotus, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. 634 new this morning, San Antonio police asking for your help finding a man they believe robbed a subway restaurant on the west side about a month ago. This is the man they are looking for. The robbery happened on September 25th at the subway on Casterville Road near General McMullen across from San Fernando Cemetery. If you know who this man is or where police can find him, you're asked to call Crime Stoppers at number 210-224-STOP. You could receive a reward of up to $5,000. San Antonio police are releasing more video of a person of interest in a deadly stabbing. The incident happened back on September 25th at a home on Kirk Place near Garland and Highway 90. The victim, Christopher Olivares, the new footage shows different angles of the man leaving Olivares' house. If you recognize this person or have any information on what happened on September 25th, call the SAPD Homicide Unit at 210-207-7635. COVID-19 is killing police officers all over our country, but there's still pushback from law enforcement against vaccination requirements. And it's seen as Britt Conway reports some cities and states are facing staffing shortages because of it. Michael Weiskopf, a police officer in St. Petersburg, Florida, died from COVID-19. Stephen DeFossis, an officer in Norton, Massachusetts, died from COVID-19. It's as absolutely as bad as you would imagine, to be raising two small girls without their dad. COVID-19 has become the leading cause of death for police officers since the pandemic began last year. That's according to the Officer Down Memorial page. But around the country, some police officers and unions are pushing back against vaccine requirements. In Chicago, about 4,500 police officers did not report their vaccination status by October 15th, as mandated by the city. In Massachusetts, the head of the troopers union says state police are missing nearly 600 uniformed members because of their refusal to comply with the vaccination mandate. 
In Seattle, the police union's president said the force lost some 300 officers over the past 18 months. In Washington state, a trooper filmed his final call after refusing to comply with the mandate. This is the last time you'll hear me in a state patrol car. And the Baltimore police union is telling officers not to reveal their vaccine status because of collective bargaining issues, according to the Baltimore Sun. But what could continued clashes mean for public safety? I think we're going to have to see who blinks first. I'm Britt Conway reporting. And happening today, a resource fair in District 8 on the northwest side is a chance to connect people with the variety of help they may need. Sarah Costa joins us live here in the studio with what you need to know. Good morning, Sarah. Hey, good morning, guys. Yeah, this will be a great opportunity for many people. A number of city departments, nonprofit partners, and more will be available to help people learn about available resources regarding housing, utility payments, and much more. It's happening at University United Methodist Church North Campus this evening from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. That's off De Zavala and Vance Jackson. CPS Energy and SAWS will be on hand to help set up utility payment plans. San Antonio Food Bank, the Train for Jobs program, and the San Antonio Housing Authority will all be on hand to help people get back on their feet. Homeowner repair support programs will also be offered. There will also be food trucks and door prizes. And of course, Metro Health will be there to give free COVID-19 vaccines, Pfizer boosters, as well as flu vaccines. Registration is not required. Again, this is all happening at Univer University United Methodist Church's North Campus from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. Mark and staff. Thanks, Sarah. 638 in Austin, Texas Republicans have officially redrawn U.S. House maps and Governor Abbott is expected to sign off on those new redistricting guidelines, which must reach his desk by today. However, some minority rights groups are suing Texas over proposed new voting rights maps. They say thwart the political strength of the state's Latino population. The lawsuit filed in federal court comes as the legislature advances maps that sort the state's 30 million residents in the new political districts for the next decade. Texas added nearly 4 million people over the last 10 years. More than half of those new residents are Latino. The Biden administration is asking the Supreme Court to block the Texas law banning most abortions while the fight over the measure's constitutionality plays out in the courts. The administration has also taken the unusual step of telling the justices they could grant the Texas law full review and decide its fate this term. No court has yet reached a decision on the constitutionality of the Texas law, and the Supreme Court rarely grants such requests. The law has been in effect since September, aside from a short pause. It bans abortions once cardiac activity is detected. Top of your consumer news, tight supply chains likely now restricting growth at factories across our country. A new report from the Federal Reserve says manufacturing output dropped 0.7% last month, biggest drop since February. A lack of computer chips for car manufacturing is getting much of the blame. Real estate company Zillow is hitting pause on buying any more homes for the rest of the year. The home listing platform got into the flipping business a few years ago, but now it says it has a backlog of homes that need to be renovated because it's having trouble finding supplies and workers. Amazon is looking to hire about 150,000 people for the holidays. That's on top of the plans announced last month by the company to add 125,000 permanent employees. Walmart is also looking for 150,000 seasonal workers. Target says it needs about 100,000. And time now at 640 and about 59 degrees out there. After the break, a local high school football coach turning around a struggling program over at Holmes High School. You don't want to miss how he is impacting the next generation of local athletes. And welcome back at 644. The Holmes Huskies have had a resurgent season under head coach Juan Morales. Morales was born and raised on San Antonio's west side and has coached in San Antonio for more than three decades. RJ Marcus sat down with a coach who has had an impact on generations of young people in San Antonio. Walk into Coach Juan Morales' office and there are stories of success and accomplishments on the walls. Dad put a football helmet on me when I was uh, one year old. Morales is a product of the Edgewood school system. He can relate to many of the kids he's coaching now and in the past. Deep in the west side, a lot of uh, Hispanic families there and um, basically that's how I grew up around a lot of family. His dad was a youth advisor at St. Jude's Catholic Church. It was a place he grew to love the game and learned about the importance of athletics. 
When you jump into athletics, you have automatically, you have a whole bunch of brothers. And uh, with that brotherhood, you have a, a lot of trust. You build a lot of uh, discipline. His door is always open for players. He always says the right thing. He, uh, he doesn't talk he doesn't talk bad about no one. He's just there, like he's just a positive person to be around. It's someone I can talk to, like if I need help with something or about school or colleges or football, I can just ask him a question and he'll give me a good answer. And part of the message he wants to pass to his players and students is that no matter where you come from, you can succeed. RJ Marquez, KSAT 12 News. It's now quarter to seven. It's looking kind of busy out there on the roadways. Let's go ahead and check in with Stephen Cavazos. As expected, you know, we're getting closer to morning rush hour. Some more folks are getting out there. Just remember to be patient when you're getting on the highways. 35 at Eisenhower shows a pretty busy commute so far. Now, we mentioned that there's a few cameras that are watching the roads closely right now from what you're seeing behind me, but some other spots, there's no cameras detected there, and sometimes issues can pretty much pop up randomly. This one here uh, we talked about a little bit earlier of 1604 southbound right at FM 78. Now, Universal City Police did urge drivers to avoid this area because of that crash, but uh, right now our map just picked that up. Thankfully, though, the update is that crash is cleared and 1604 is now open. However, take a look right there. We are seeing some residual buildup with traffic moving at 37 miles per hour. So while it is open, just remember to drive safe and take it easy out over there. But taking a jump down here, we still have this stall. This guy's been out there for quite a while off I-35 southbound at St. Mary's Street. It has been a morning of stalls, but some of the other ones that we've showed you have thankfully cleared out and are not causing any issues issues on the road. A wider look at the map does show we are seeing the normal buildup spots there along 1604 near Holotus and also on 410. That could just be the traffic that's getting out on the roadways this morning, but thankfully no big crashes that are going to cause any issues just yet. So we'll continue to watch these roads closely. Just remember to drive safely 281 at San Pedro. Pretty quiet start so far, guys, and I like the way it's looking. Uh, but again, watch out for those stalls because we know that could be a pesky issue. Skeleton crews at it again. Oh, just when you'd wonder what else our friends can come up with there. Yep, it is the here's the great Bonzini or Bonzini the great performing his next bone chilling feat. Make no bones about it. <laughs> a lot of puns in here too. He is a cut above the rest. Awesome. Again, that is just fantastic. And see and the there's other tricks happening down there. Yeah, there's a the little guy with the, the, uh, the hidden ball. Yeah. The dog is fascinated Aww. by it. Mm -hmm. I guess that is the lovely assistant. Yes. Relatively speaking. Thank you. <laughs> okay, you know, uh, yeah, beautiful view out there right now. We've got a couple of clouds hanging around. And uh, did you think she looked good? So, um, <laughs> 60 here in town. Same thing, hello to upper 50s in the hill country. These numbers about 10 degrees above what it was yesterday. Still might want a light jacket, not, but uh, may be able to go without it. Uh, 55 is the dew point. Bernie stage, same thing. This is the measure of moisture in the atmosphere. Is a simple way to explain it. And these numbers are up a good 10 to 15 degrees compared to what it was at this time yesterday. So more humidity out there, even though it's not oppressively humid, doesn't hit you when you walk out the door. It, you, you notice it and you're going to notice it more as the uh, dew point temperatures will be going up progressively throughout the rest of the week, a couple of degrees each and every day. So that's going to hold the low temperatures up as well. So low temperatures are going to be staying in the Oh, gosh, mid upper 60s once we get in toward the end of the week and in toward the weekend. Now, there are going to be a fair amount of clouds today, not completely cloudy skies like this depicts. This is a lot of high level moisture, um, call it partly cloudy, and that's going to be the case each and every day throughout the rest of the week. Late Thursday night, early Friday morning, there's a weak disturbance which is going to slide across the area. It may squeeze out a shower doubtful, but just a kind of a mention of it. And then we go into Saturday and Sunday. A couple of showers are going to be possible on Saturday, maybe uh, Sunday as well. Again, this is that broad brush computer model, so it's going to be mm, few and far between at best. And same thing going into Monday, just very small chances for a couple of showers out here. The good fall pattern up in the northern half of the United States with these uh, lows and these big troughs moving on through. But the high is pretty much holding tough and keeping all that stuff up to the north of us. We have you know minor fluctuations here, but again, overall, the trend is for temperatures and humidity to start to go up. Now, there's going to be a bigger uh, trough developing out there to the northwest of us, and that's going to be moving through about the middle part of next week. And that one looks like it is going to be uh, more significant and touching off a few more uh, showers around here by the middle part of next week. So forecast today, we're going to make it up to uh, 76 degrees at noon, partly cloudy skies, and then a high temperature today makes it up to 82. 
right about what you would expect about a normal average high temperature the next couple of mornings each and every morning and afternoon going to go up a few degrees one or two degrees every day partly cloudy skies and a shower or two by the weekend wouldn't really uh, change any outdoor plans but it is going to be warmer and more humid it won't be as pleasant as what it was this past weekend we'll just hope for the fall weather later on yeah uh next hope for it really is middle part of next week okay yeah fair enough mike ostrage mm -hmm. thank you 650 about 59 degrees a mural in memory of a local woman i'm katrina weber i'll have that story tomorrow on gmsa well astros fans waking up disappointed this morning Astros got crushed yesterday by Boston in game three of the ALCS. Red Sox beat Houston 12 to three to take a series lead at two games to one. Stroh's will try to bounce back tonight at seven out at Fenway Park. And taking a look outside with live cam, we were just talking about it. The humidity is creeping back up. We're at 59 degrees, but if you're going to be outside for an extended amount of time this morning, you still might want a light jacket in some areas. We'll be right back. Welcome back. It's about five minutes till what may be the most significant demonstration of North Korea's military strength since President Biden took office. The North fired at least one ballistic missile into the sea overnight. That's according to South Korea's military. The ballistic missile was likely designed to be launched from a submarine. Today's launch came just hours after the U.S. reaffirmed an offer to resume talks on North Korea's nuclear weapons program. And taking a look at the TransGuide cameras, I saw traffic build up a little bit at I-10 and Callahan. Let's go ahead and check in with Stephen Cavazos. Yeah, it doesn't look like a great situation, especially now that morning rush is here. But taking a closer look, you can see some flashing lights out in the distance here. Vehicles are obviously right now at a standstill there of I-10. Now, while we have not pinpointed exactly which direction this is on I-10, our map does show we're seeing a build up there at east in the eastbound lanes right at Callahan Road. Other slowdowns that we are watching here off I-35 southbound at St. Mary's Street, we'll be watching those stalls closely and it was an improvement right here off loop 16 to 4 southbound at FM 78. Mike's been a busy morning. How's weather looking? Not bad. Beautiful sunrise in store. You can see uh, that orange glow. A few of those mid clouds hanging out there and we're going to keep a few clouds around. We're at 60 right now. So, uh, you know, mid 50s, uh, upper 50s, low 60s light jacket. Not a bad idea. A little more humidity out there and uh, throughout the rest of today, 76 at noon, 82 high temperature and we are going to see temperatures slowly creep upward. Humidity is going to slowly creep upward throughout the rest of the week and maybe just a shower or two over the weekend. High temperatures are going to be in the mid and upper 80s, lows in the mid and upper 60s. Thank you, Mike. Stephen, thank you. Yes, thanks for joining us today. Hope you have a wonderful Tuesday and enjoy the weather for now before that humidity comes back completely. We will see you back here for GMSA at 9. Of course, Good Morning America is next live right here on